we're back. We're uh, if you missed the last episode, we talked about um, complicating things up a little bit when it comes to uh, to to signals and information gathering for. Uh, fleets and other things and, and coordinations with fleets, uh, all sorts of good topics about some, some suggestions and some ideas floating around. Very, very uh, theory heavy, theory uh, craft heavy up there. If you missed that, if you're watching this on YouTube, click that little button up there and watch that episode. If you're watching this live, just watch it later. You can come join us now. Uh, this is the questions and answers session where we're going to be asking uh, or taking questions that are asked by the chat live to answer on stream. So, Without further ado, let's get started with some of the questions. Um, first question comes from Gin and Tonic, who asks, when you get right down to brass tasks, tax, ugh, piracy is profiting off of uh, the other of others without putting in the equivalent effort yourself. Why should you have a perfect intelligence, perfect situational awareness, perfect tools uh, to enable your endeavor? Um, no, I don't think you should have perfect, but it's that's that's you have to put in effort. I disagree that piracy yeah. is, is is less effort. I think piracy is actually more effort. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's that's a popular misconception right now. But the thing of it is, is that you're going to have to hunt down your targets. You're going to have to track them down. You're going to always have to establish routes. If you're dealing with other players, that's going to obviously complicate things much more, which when you earlier when you were talking about the idea of most piracy is going to be against NPCs. That's basically true, mm -hmm. right? Because if you think about it, a pirate, you're out there, you're trying to make money, right? And so you're going to go for what is the most predictable result. If you need a solid income to be able to live out on the fringe of space, you're going to go for the low hanging fruit more often than not. Like the big ops are going to be kind of special occasion things. So it, it's going to be a difficult life when you're getting chased by the police and all of that throughout systems like Stanton. You're going to be pushed out to fringe areas. So it's the idea that it's it's easy is born out of the fact that right now everybody's trapped in Stanton. There are no real NPCs to shoot and loot. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's NPCs to shoot, but not really to loot. So you've basically had all these pirate players who have nothing else to do, and that's why you're encountering them as much as you're encountering them. It's also important to remember that current pirate players take a lot of planning. It's not necessarily all of the work for like, so the work for someone, something like a cargo hauler is in the logistics, moving things point A to point B, knowing when to move it, how much to get, all that kind of stuff. But a pirate needs to have intelligence. They need to have practice. They need to have timing everything needs to be perfect uh, a the a perfect pirate um uh attack will look like effortless it'll look it'll look absolutely effortless because it has to be t dialed and timed to the right moment being able to break out attack disable uh grab and go is is almost a, a it's like a special forces raid you know, where, where special forces will train in a sim of an area constantly to try to get their timing down at the exact right moments um, because they yeah. have to, to be able to survive. Uh, and that takes skill and time. And uh, so it, to, it's a lot of practice. Yeah. And, and then to a to a, a normal player, a pirate doesn't look looks, looks like it's not taking any skill. But in reality, especially when Star Citizen starts moving more towards the ability for piracy to become a viable option, it will definitely become more of a, of a skill option while looking easier. So what do you think, CZ? Oh, it's, it's difficult. Um, yeah. Last stream, we, we were tracking two players for about an hour and a half before we were able to set off an ambush. And before that, I sat at global, uh, scraping chat, um, instigating conversations just to see what people can tell me. Because mm -hmm. taking a mantis out, sitting at Arc L one is next to worthless. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of instigating and collecting, and then setting up that ambush where you only get to see us for that one minute thirty as we extort you and then kill you, if need be. Yeah. Uh, and and that's the thing as well is that like a pirate at the end of the day is about making money without expending as much 
like the best pirate pirates in this game will be the pirates who can what's it called it's called violence of action i guess which is where they can effectively disable you without ever shooting you and getting you to surrender without killing anybody because mm-hmm. they want to expend the least amount of effort as possible which takes a lot of skill yeah. um you know and and when that comes down to it, it, yeah, pirates are going to have the biggest profit margins because they don't have to spend as much, but their their spent is in time. Their 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 entire uh, loss is time because a pirate and, is going to spend most of their time not making money, whereas a cargo yeah. hauler can constantly do turnovers and make more and more and more money. Uh, a pirate might be one hit, the one score that they can get, and that that might be their own. That might take them four hours to achieve. So. And it's it's you could hardly do piracy alone. It it takes a team to set up an ambush, especially when you don't know what you're walking into. Yeah. No, uh, I think I think I think he meant extort or kill, not then kill. Um, you know. Um, all right, let's go on to the next question. Steve B. Dancer asks, "How uh, so? How do you would you tell a C two or another large ship with stealth components?" I think we already covered a lot of that. Like, I think the the thing the the key thing you remember with stealth is that it's not invisibility. It's it's changing the scope. So yeah. I think I think a, a, a C2 with stealth components would look like a freelancer mm-hmm. rather than uh, or Aurora rather than a C2. And that's the key. Or would look like there would be one C2. In fact, there are like five C2s because they are the other ones have stealth components so they can reduce their signature and hide in the signature of the, the larger one. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Death Trooper 117 asks, pretty much what we need is a DCS FA-18C Hornet radio and ADF slash UFC is what you, you're kind of describing. Is that correct? I am not familiar with that. That's a lot yeah. of acronyms. <laughs> I'm not an Air Force person, um, but yeah. That's basically what I was describing the Link 16 system. It's just radio communications to everything you have hooked to it. Uh, I, I would say, to, for a simplicity stake, there needs to be some sort of MDF, um, or is it MDF or MFD? It's MFD. MFD, uh, where option, like kind of a, a, a mode or a, a section that allow you to set your sensors to mm-hmm. transmit and receive just transmit just receive yes um, i i would go further and says that needs to be a whole part of your ship that you yeah. have to think about sacrificing yeah but i mean you, you definitely yeah. want to have at least an option to set it because i think a, a regular fighter should be able to at least receive or transmit maybe not both at the same time yeah um the f-16s right now just receive and the 22s do both and I think the 35s do both as well. But yeah, did you want you want only a handful of ships that can do both way communications? Because even even if you're communicating, which is useful in an operation, what you're going after can also see that you are talking to each other. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to still yeah. think about minimizing your signatures that you're outputting. Now that, that feeds into the to be able to see things at range too. If you see mm-hmm. a big group of of uh, and that's and. You know, that'd be a great way, because even though communicating may not actually be people chatting back and forth, it may just be signals linked so that mm-hmm. this this Starfarer is sending information to its Hornet um, yeah. escort. And you can see that at a distance. You can see them talking back and forth. You can see the signals bouncing back and forth between the two the two ships, knowing that they're they're exchanging data back and forth. That's, that's mm-hmm. another way of looking at it as well. So, um, Yeah. Uh, but I, th- I think I think you can simplify it in a way that is just s- send, receive, send or receive kind of sl- clicking buttons. So it makes it easier for somebody who just was like, I, I don't know who I am. I don't know what my purpose is. All I know is I must kill those sorts of players don't have to think about. Did I did yeah. I am I doing these sorts of sig, sig ops things? I just want to hit the button and then go kill things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it should be up to an officer on a larger ship to be able to take that and use that information. So then you were going to say, yeah, something? well, I think that like what you're, when you're describing it, like when, for the person who wants, just wants to get in the ship and blow things up and he's like, Oh, there's a star fair. I'm in a Corsair and I've got 
NPCs in my guns, let's say, and I blow, uh, if I knock the course like the uh, Starfarer out, I can go in and maybe grab some loot real quick, and then I got to run. But when we're talking about analyzing signatures and all that, that opens up when you have multiple people on your ship and people who know the systems that they're they're working with. That's another layer altogether. That's going into the deep, right? Mm-hmm. And so the the player who just wants to blow things up, he can still blow things up. It all works. But if you really want to get into it, having the system there that allows you to get deep into these things and having those options when you really start to organize yourselves, that is kind of, I think, the goal of what we're describing, right? Yeah. That's kind of what we're going for. Yeah, so something that would allow for multi-crew gameplay. Anything that can mm-hmm. make it so that having a signals officer on, a, you know, a comms officer effectively on a on a ship that's more than just talking to people, but also able to sort information properly to know that this is, you know, flight one, flight two, flight three, and these are, you know, support ships and being able to track their own side, yeah. be able to look at, a, at, a, at some signals and go, that's a fleet out there, you know, like, yeah, it's a big blob, but is, you know, that could big blob could just be one starfare. And then you look at it and you're able to sort through and see that there's data being transferred to a bunch of, it's like, okay, so there's smaller targets somewhere in there. That's, that's, that we can't see that are talking to each other. And then, you know, be able to like listen in further and be like, there's at least two or three size three power plants in that, that mob. What has a size three power plant? Let's filter that out. Um, yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, all right. I think, I think that's, that's, that's key for future multi yeah. gameplay, you know? So absolutely. And you can still have a, someone who just wants to go kill shit with a with a with a hornet can still kill shit with a hornet, but yeah. it helps it helps that person who wants to just go kill shit with a hornet. With if there's somebody on a larger ship that's like they're over there, there are fifteen fighters and two two larger ships in that in that that pile, so you know be wary that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> all right. Next question comes from Steve B. Dancer, who asks, what happens if they never give that much information, that much details, but put together a database? I'm okay with that. What do y'all think? Yeah. Cool. yeah. Any any type of collection you do, you're going to get a half a percentile of the picture you need. It's These kind of things takes takes months to draw a picture with. You're not a pirate. If you get interdicted by a pirate, he's going to have been following you for a long time. It's it's not just going to be five minutes, I see a hole, let's steal it. Mm. We're going to know where you're going, who you're communicating with, what you're hauling. Weeks in advance, we want to know what routes you take, where do you run if you get spooked. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're you're going to give out 1%, but over a period of time, we're going to have a next to complete picture that we can use. Mm-hmm. And and I think even you can even simplify it if you need to, CIG needs to, where if you're able to do, I, I hate to say mini game, but like some sort of activity where you can separate signals properly. So you know, like there's, you're listening and you go, okay, there's like a, some sort of, meter that's going on and you see like a high meter you kind of trying to pull down that high meter and you're trying to balance everything out so then you balance it out and then it'll be able to separate those signals so you can separate the the differences and then continue to work that out until you can separate all the signals one with one another and then your ship's systems can automatically go hornet starfare you know like automatically identify those would work as well um but requiring some sort of skill of of knowing like where those separations become and uh you know or at least giving us some vague ideas of like the sizes of those ships so visually a little bit like um trying to separate the piece like if you had like three different puzzles and you pushed all the pieces together and mm-hmm. then just using the kind of like the background color to go oh this is from that first puzzle these pieces are from the second yeah. puzzle these yeah like that yeah. that would be awesome yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just thinking about it in terms of, like, gameplay uh, ways of doing things. Mm-hmm. Um, I still like the idea of just hacking databases and just having a list of data. 
you know? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and having to scour that data and go like, oh, yeah. Every day at three o'clock, this guy, he, he goes down there to get the, the loot. All right. Yeah. All right. That'd be just fascinating to even just see as a player, being able to like have yeah. that information and be like, okay, this is the pattern that's going on over here. And then being able to mm-hmm. sit there and watch and be like, wow, yeah, that actually works. Because it'd be cool to see like NPC patterns. So, uh, Stevie Dancer asks, do you feel that the MSR can have its sensor and computer components changed out uh, to do hacking and data s- uh, stripping? What do you think, CC? And you mentioned this earlier. I, I did excellently answer this question, but yeah, every computer suites should have different task orientable components. So you have one that's just passively scanning and one that stores data, one that can hack, or you're, you're even going to want multiple suites that carry certain bits of information mm-hmm. and not, you're never going to want to carry a whole picture of what you know and what you're doing at one time. So yes, um, when those come online, those need to be physical, changeable components. Yeah, but I've always envisioned them as like slots, like like because yeah. CIG loves to have their um, '80s technology to have some sort of like big honky the server slot. racks. Yeah, like a server like a server that you push in and pull out. You know? Yeah, um, so you can actually visually see them and mess with them, but also have a slot in the game so it's not just like a little chip um uh but looks but it looks cool yeah it does look cool (laughs) well i mean like you think about it like they can go with that they can go with that look like you could say oh i need this hardware because i'm going to be brute forcing a lot of passwords so i'm going to need something with a lot of computational power versus oh i can get into this but I need to store a lot of data, so I'm going to be putting in like storage racks instead of like brute force, and having to manage that on your ship would be amazing if and we could get. You're gonna take all of all of your storage stuff at the end of the day, and you're gonna dump it somewhere and put in a new storage set for tomorrow. Mm. True. So or you can sell that data to that interested is, that parties. Is the most viable option. <laughs> yeah. Um. And yeah, I think that's kind of what data running is going to be as well. I think like the reality of data running, I think, is that data running is mostly going to be NPC based, not player based. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it could easily be something to the effect of uh, armed, like like armored cars, because the, they don't have faster than light travel, and there's no way that they're going to be sending financial information over open w- wires without any <laughs> sort of encryption. Um, and even encryptions is still there's still vulnerable points because the CIG wants you to be able to hack yeah. comma rays. So like financial data has got to go by courier. It's, it's, it's so all of the information, all the financial data that needs to go from point A to point B, any kind of changes in finances will probably have to go through a MSR or a Herald. And they're going to have to store that information, fly as fast as they can to another location and jump them off. So that gives another option for like piracy. So if you're a pirate, you might not attack a convoy of starfarers laden with quantanium. You attack that herald that comes by every three a at three p.m. to pick up all the information and then fly to another location because you can mm-hmm. ambush him and take all of that data, which are effectively just credits, and you could just put into your own account and leave, sort of thing. Yeah. So. Um. All right. Next question comes from Griffin, who asks, your thought on the great Drake Corsair's delivery time? Invictus, possibly? What are you thinking, Minion? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I would, in my heart, I would love to say yes, but my brain tells me that the Drake Corsair, they're probably going to pocket it for a little while if they get it done, and they're probably hoping to do... Now that we've got Pyro V1, mm-hmm. here's the Drake Corsair. I think that they're going to try to tie those two things in together. That, that, that would be the logic side of me. My heart says, yes, I wanted it at Invictus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, uh, CC? Do you think we're going to see the uh, Corsair at Invictus? Ideally. Um, <laughs> I can only hope we see it. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I think we're going to see it when Pyro comes or close to after Pyro, if that's past Invictus State. 
it's it's the perfect time to drop it. They're going to hopefully work out all of the data gameplay loops, right? Corsairs and Explorer. Does it doesn't do data, does it? I don't think so. It's an Explorer, okay. but it's a it's like any Drake ship. It's an Explorer. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Bear other works. people's ships. <laughs> yeah. Explore yeah. the inside of other people's cargo base. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, I, I yeah, based off of what I've seen, it's still being worked on in July, at least right now, is the plan. So I don't think we're going to see mm-hmm. it in Invictus. I'd love to see it in Invictus, but we'll probably see it on the... Uh, well, CNG hasn't done this, but I wish they do. I, if, if it was in a good state, I would love to, love to see it on the floor of Invictus so we can at least see it. Oh, yeah. Even if, it's, even if we can't go into it, if we could just see the exterior, it'd be cool. So... Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't think we'll see it until at least um, IAE, probably, uh, because it'd be a great ship to release for IAE. If that, along with the Benu Merchantman, would be an amazing kind of double combo. Oh um, yeah, people would lose their minds. Yeah, and it's perfect. It's a it's a well large ship and a and a capital ship. So those two right there. Um, let's go with da, da, da. Griffin asks. Your estimates on the Banu Merchantman's new price when it's flight ready. What do you think, CC? He's asking like it's final sale price. It's final sale price, yeah. Easily a thousand. I think they're gonna go there with it. Minion? Yeah, I mean that ship has been JPEG uh you know, fat fodder for a long time. They know the community wants it. They're gonna pump that price up. It's going to be chunky. That's going to be a big boy when it comes out. That might actually be the high end of what you would want a pirate ship to be with those big guns on the front. Yeah. I, I, I say easily 1,000. The problem is is that, A, it's the size of an 890. So it's big. And an mm-hmm. 890 is like 900 bucks. So, and it, it's a number two. It's an alien ship. So alien tax is going to be a thing. So it's going to be mm-hmm. close to uh, $1,100. Probably just just a thousand oh, yeah. dollars easy. Um, so yeah, definitely because it's currently like 600 and there's no way it's staying at 600 with its size. So <coughs> number three, the size, the size eight gun. Yeah. Dude, that's also, it's got a big gun. <laughs> so it's going <laughs> to be expensive. Uh, it's probably going to, it's, it's probably going to have the biggest gun in the game until the interest comes out. The biggest mm-hmm. gun for any ship. So, <laughs> oh man. Uh Steve B Dancer asks, do you all feel that 317 uh that might be able to sh- sell ship components and ship weapons with 317? <sighs> uh you mean sell them back to the shop? Yeah. Uh I mean I, you would logically think that they would, but I could see how that would be something that would kind of just kind of get breezed over. And they they might revisit it at a later date when you're actually taking components off of people's ships or off of wrecks or something like that. Yeah. I would see it more likely with the with the advent of salvage. I know, I know, I know. Mm-hmm. I heard it even as I mm-hmm. said it. But with that and the <laughs> vulture, I could see it becoming a part of that. But I, immediately, I just think it's going to be guns and armor that you loot out of uh, bunkers and whatnot. I think anything you can loot, you can sell. I think that's what they're going to go for. I, I don't think we're going to eventually. See yeah, uh, I think I think I think anything you can loot uh, in game right now will be sellable in three seventeen. I don't think it'll all be viable. <laughs> I think you pull out that like whatever that little Apple thing. Like uh, you could probably sell it for like two cents or whatever. You can get like a an old gun. You can get a gun, but you're not going to get the full price of a gun. So you know if yeah. a gun costs you know 15k on the market right now, or uh, 1.5 or 1,500 dollars or whatever 1,500 UEC, you'll be able to sell it for like a quarter of the price or something. But you'll get some money out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we'll see ship components selling until after salvage is in and maybe not even the same time as salvage, like a, a patch after that. So what do you think? Oh, CC? Cool. I'm just going to just second all of your opinions. You're going to sell <laughs> what you loot. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next question comes from Steve B dancer who asks, as you know, now people talk using separate program like discord gilded. So how would that work? How will that work? 
how we're work, work shocking on game. Um, all right, <clears throat> let me let me pitch my idea because this is something that I've I've thought about a lot. CIG needs um, effectively a hierarchy of communications. You need to be able to in a party chat or into a chat room to be able to set priority speakers, to be able to have one person who can communicate across all channels and have uh, roles for each individual. So if I'm on a ship, I can designate, you know, chief of operations, chief of engineering, chief of, uh, uh, you know, uh, signals, uh, you know, the, 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 the commander, you know, second in command, um, uh, the, the gunnery officers, like, like each have their own statuses and then those people have control over people underneath them so that they can talk. But as the captain, I should be able to speak to everyone at once and override their voice abilities so that they can't, you know, so they have to can only hear me, uh, which is something that works in almost every other like Gilded and, and TeamSpeak have those 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 op- options. Yeah. So and that's the only way you're going to have to update in game comms to make them work well, uh, especially if they're, they're lightweight and they work well in game, then people won't use exterior programs. So. Yeah. That's a that's a huge hurdle to jump over because so many online games have tried to put in their own voice chat and almost universally it's always fallen flat on its face because it's like, yeah, but every, I use TeamSpeak for this and I use TeamSpeak for that. I use Discord for that. Like, mm-hmm. I use Discord for every game that I play now. I, I don't think I've used TeamSpeak except for some stuff with Execute for years. And to get over that hump, you'd have to put in something really amazing into the game. Yeah. Because, yeah, because, and I don't think you should be able to identify comms through the, through that system, like comms in game, because that's, yeah. that, that becomes, I'll just use exterior programs. You have to make the, the interior programs work well for people to use them. Um, and I think the whole communications an- angle is should be more of ships talking to each other in terms of their computers talking to one another mm-hmm. for like fleet operations and such. Um, and uh, to answer your questions, Qpan, who uses TeamSpeak in 2022? Arma players use TeamSpeak in 2022. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Be- because it's th- most of the mods that have to do with any kind of communications are built on TeamSpeak, not uh, built on anything else, so... Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, next question comes from Death Trooper, who asks, does the current flight model feel too arcadey and unrealistic to the point where no player needs to skill the pilot? Um, do you see dramatic changes, drastic changes coming? It's a balance. You never want to make the game only available to skilled players because then no one will play. But you don't want to make the game so basic that anyone can become a skilled player overnight. I argue that Star Citizen isn't too arcadey, but I think the future of nuance is going to be in components and power management. Uh, A good example is what was it? Maybe two years ago now? They showed off a a prototype of the idea of starting up a a ship from cold start. So if you had a cold reactor, you would use some fuel to inject it into the uh, to reactor to turn it back on to have something to help it start on to start up, so that you would have a reactor room turn on and then have its own power source, which would go down over time and require you to uh, replace it, which would mean that. Reactor power is a limited resource, which means that if you're using your, if you're flying your ship, firing, every time you fire a laser gun, your power is draining down, 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 and you have to use more fuel to resupply it or go back and charge it somewhere else. Those sorts of situations where you have more complex startup sequences and more complex interconnectedness of, of systems on a ship matter for the, that skill. Because that's where you'll start, you'll start to see a lot of that skill and a lot of that more realism uh, in there. But what do y'all think, CC? I um, I'm not the best pilot, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if I could comment about this. It it feels fine to me. Um, mm-hmm. We have we have a new player in our orgs, and there's obviously a learning curve. So 
there's there's a lot of intricacies to learn in flying, but he's he's not crashing into asteroids, which is also oh nice. So I think we're sitting in a good a good medium. Mm -hmm. It's it's really is going to come down to who's going to do power management and timing your attacks is that's that's the kind of gameplay I want to see over just knowing how to fly. Okay, uh, minion, what do you think? Um, we're we're kind of we're kind of at a in a weird place because once again we're dealing with six degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. and, or CIG's interpretation of like real physics. And so if your main thruster is too powerful, then you end up with jousting. If your mm -hmm. if your maneuvering thrusters are too powerful, then you just end up circle strafing one another, right? In a three dimensional space. And so CIG is just always kind of moving the bar a little bit here, a little bit there, trying to find the happy medium in between in between the two. Ultimately, I think that we are kind of headed to our, towards a point. The ion, I think, was a, a bit of a short preview of where we're heading. Mm -hmm. Whereas to say that because we need so much speed to traverse like hundreds or thousands of kilometers when we're going to land somewhere on a planet, the problem with that is, is that at any point, a larger ship that's still fairly maneuverable can decouple and bring its weapons to bear on a smaller ship who, because they're now chasing at such a high rate of speed, they no longer have their maneuverability advantage. Mm -hmm. I think that as we start to move further and further into that, I think that you're going to see CIG maybe pause and start to say, w you know, we've opened up a can of worms here. Mm -hmm. And right now, like my gut feeling is, is that the future for fighters doesn't look that good. Yeah. Uh, I think... Small to medium multi-crew moving on up. I think that's where the smart money is right now. Um, I, I, I know how people feel about this, and certainly I've gotten into these arguments with a few people, but the sad part about it is, is that Arena Commander gave a lot of people the wrong impression of combat in Star Citizen. And it has only been perpetuated because of the slow development of the game. And so, so many people rely on an arena commander as the idealized model. But Star Citizen isn't like a 40 kilometer or 20 kilometer bubble that everyone's trapped within that they have to fight each other in. It's, for all intents and purposes, it's an infinite space. And in that infinite space, new rules apply. And so, people are starting to adjust to that. But I think CIG to kind of come to grips with that, it's going to take a little while longer, and then we'll we might see CIG start to suggest some interesting changes. I mean, you can just see that with the with like the hammerhead. Like right now, the only problem with the hammerhead, if it's fully crewed, is that it lacks the range to truly defend itself properly. Yeah, um, that's another example too. But if you if a light fighter gets too close to a hammerhead, a true fully fully crewed hammerhead that is even halfway competent will wreck a good fighter. Yeah, it's vaporized. Yeah, it just, it's, it just you, ends you just they they just cash your ass out right then and there. It, it so it's again yeah with the guns problem with the hammerhead. That's that's a very interesting problem because as we start to see ships like the Banu Merchantman come into the game with those big size eight guns. <laughs> If the Banu Merchantman's got anything approaching reasonable amounts of speed comparable to a hammerhead, the Banu Merchantman's going to walk all over the hammerhead. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really kind of where we're kind of headed. And it, it's going to be interesting to watch this develop. Yeah, because uh, I don't think it's going to be big ship equals win, but big ship with crew equals advantage. Uh, and, big and advantage. Very big advantage. And that they have to go that way because it's the only way they're going to suggest, like encourage people to multi-crew ship because otherwise mm -hmm. they're just going to use fighters. It's like if there's no advantage to using a ship that has seven people versus seven ships, then no one will ever use uh, a big ship with seven people. They'll have to use seven ships. Uh, and they'll also see things like the reduction of range of fighters so like fighters will no longer be able to have a lot of fuel to be able to, to travel so they'll need to have some sort of mothership um adding more wear and tear adding more other things like that other aspects of the game will make it so that fighters are good shock troops but not very good at long-term engagements uh, yeah so yeah 
Um, all right. Let's move on to the next question, which is Gin and Tonic, who asks, how much release date delay are you willing to accept to enable these systems you want? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reality is, is that the systems we currently have are not robust enough. Eventually, they're going to run up to the problem where when you have 200 people versus 200 people, being able to figure out who is who in that system with current systems is going to be a nightmare. It'll be mm -hmm. chaos. And the screen will just be filled with icons to the point where you can't see anything. The current system needs to go. It's just, it's it's good for a placeholder system, but when you start scaling up this the game, you need to have some sort of way of filtering out the stuff and being able to in, engage with, with the gameplay, uh, with, with multi-crew gameplay at a meaningful way. Um, so this is something that, this isn't even a situation where it's like, these are systems we want, and so we'd like to, for them to be implemented. This is more of a, this is a problem that you will have. So yeah, you will yeah. have to address it in the It's long inescapable. Um, and they're just not doing it right now because there aren't 200 people per server. But mm -hmm. that's coming to a mid. Like, in the next year or so, that is going to change. And when that changes, yeah. CIG needs to start preparing for that sort of swap over. It's going to be painful because it's going to require a lot of work. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a release date? Yeah, that's a good question. There's no, there's no release date in Star Citizen. <laughs> release date in Star Citizen in the same <laughs> sentence. All right. Um, yeah, no. What, what do you think, CC? It's... I'm fine for development being forever. That's that's the nature of MMOs, is as mm -hmm. long as the servers can stay on, it's never going to stop being developed. And I, I am 100% okay with that, seeing a new gameplay when I'm 92. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, DFX says, since since getting a multi-crew together is like trying to schedule DNT, I'll just buy extra accounts and auto auto fix uh, auto the turrets. Well, no, you can, you can still get crew members. Like, like you can yeah. have NPC crew members. Yeah. Um, and if you really want to big, 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 get a big crew together, you can always join like an org. Uh, I don't yeah. think... I don't think big ships is auto win, but like if you're getting into a fight, there will always be a spot for fighters. It just won't be the king of the ring forever. It's going to eventually have to go away. That, I think that's that's our point when we were talking about like the future is multi crew ships. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Max asks, do you think we will need to hack ships during salvage operations? I think so. Ideally, that's there's you're going to want information. There's going to be stuff to sell. I don't think you're going to need to hack like it's memory banks, um, but you'll be wasting a lot of potential assets or cash or leads onto something else you can exploit if you don't. Well, I um, think that hacking could also add value to a salvage operation. Like, let's say, oh, there's a wreck down on Yella. You go down to Yella in your vulture. Sure, you can just pick up some scrap metal, a couple of guns, and walk away. But what happens if you take a little hacking chip, just a, a easier version of a, of hacking, and go in and find out through the ship's records, why did the ship crash? What happened to the crew? All that information. And you can relay that all back when you you know, complete the mission. And that just adds huge bonuses or NPCs Reputation. view you as like a master salvager because you go the extra mile. So you can just kind of go in, tick the box and leave and get your reward, or you can really get into it. And I think that would be amazing if it was part of it. If it was that deep, it would be perfect. Yeah. And I think, I think we can already see some of that, that, in game right now where the idea of like there's missions we have to go find the bodies of a crew that are in a crash site if that was an additional thing you could do to gain additional rep being not just a salvager but also a uh, a uh, a rescuer yeah you, you, like you hack into the database you you pull out the black box but you have to pop that lock that's keeping that black box in, in, set, in, in check so you gotta pull in your hacking chip and hack hack out the lock and pull it open 
Now you've got the black box that you can go back and give to the to the, uh, the company that owns the ship. Now you're going to get paid extra money because you're giving them the information they need as to why their ship crashed. And you're getting reputation as being more of a thorough sal salvager and maybe even a good reputation because them now the, those people whose families were in that wreck will have some sort of solace as to what happened and they know what, yeah. how it happened. And so people will look at you as a more of a positive re reputation versus somebody who just goes in, strips everything and leaves. So I mean, if CIG goes all in, when you pop that black box, maybe it was part of a collapsing mining organization and now you have known location of a rare deposit site yeah you can go show up with your prospector and that's additional money you're exploiting for free off of one mission yeah, yeah. and 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 those can be simple um just text-based options as well but you know you can also go a little bit more case we've even talked we've talked about in the past of the idea of having final messages that you could listen to because i think players would legitimately be interested in hearing if they knew that there was some sort of story being told in a crash site, they'd be more interested in listening to all of these to like audio logs from a crash site so they could hear my, this whole story of what happened. My yeah. favorite mission is PI Wanted just because yeah. there's a narrative. It doesn't pay good. It's awful to do, but it's a story to be yeah. heard. And it's so I much fun. I love that mission, dude. I've been waiting for them to add to that for so long. Oh, I, I wish I had more time to like. I wish they had more time to develop that, like get into the whole story about the the gang that's smuggling through there. I love doing that mission. That's crazy. I love that. I, I know that takes a long long time and effort from CIG, but I think adding at least some elements to those, even if it's some a, a repeating element where you hear similar stories or just in the different names, or they don't have names, but they just you tell the stories. Because like I remember back in the two point days you would go for the ICC missions and go to like various um, sites and they'd have last recorded messages of the people who died. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That sort of thing would be nice too. Uh, so. Uh, all right. Next question comes from Platinum Sniper who asks, will there be a wipe when selling is implemented like the wipe we got for physical inventory? I don't think so. I don't think yeah. they're going to I don't think they're going to wipe until we see uh, at, at probably dynamic missions. So, uh, Cece, what do you, what do you think? I don't I don't know what they would have to wipe. Yeah. So I don't I don't see it. I don't know game development. Maybe there's a lot of things that they're doing that has to cause a wipe, mm. and I just don't know it. Yeah, that's a, it's a good point as well. Is that like there may be something that just they have to wipe for, but I. And let, I don't think they want to wipe. They'd rather yeah, try to keep it as consistent as possible unless they absolutely have to wipe. What do you think, Minion? I I feel that the wipe is, <laughs> is more a reaction to when the money that players have in the game gets to ludicrous levels. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, we got to, we got to, we got to cut this back, I, you know, because we can't have this guy thinking he's taking a billion dollars into, you know, into the future we got to make sure to chop this tree down every once in a while I, I i feel that it's probably more a reflection of that or just inherently data corruption you mm -hmm. know some people's accounts they get screwed up over time and cig just has to kind of wipe and reset just after so many players accounts have gotten messed up that they ha they just have to do it I, th I would say those are the two reasons for the wipe. I don't really see selling as having a big impact. At least I hope it doesn't because I've been stealing so many guns and armor out of the bunkers. <laughs> I need to sell them. I need to be able to sell Don't them. ruin my payday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think there's also something to be said about stealing these the guns and stuff like that to be sold on the black market because at some point, CIG is going to implement tracking systems for these weapons. And they probably have something like serial numbers on them. So... Finding a gun in a like say a, a cave mission where you've completed it, hmm. it's effectively a stolen gun, and you might be able to yeah. sell that on the black market. And now it's a gun that's registered to somebody else that can't be traced to you as a as a as a uh, user, um, you know, of, of the weapon. So there might be some of that stuff going on as well. So, mm -hmm. um, let's go down to the next question. 
Uh, Steve B. Dancer asks, do you feel you should be able to hack mining facilities and change production rates on it? Uh, commodity, uh, like, like for commodities. Uh, so it produces more of an expensive commodity. I don't know about that. What do you think? Yeah. Um, if you think about it, its production rate is going to be mostly hardware that you can't mm -hmm. hack. So now that, that should be fixed. I could see hacking a mining facility to know what they're outputting and in what quantities. If that's buying. Yeah. Uh, but maybe, not, not messing with it. Maybe even being able to hack to get to behind an area where they're, they're staging ore, you know, yeah. so you can get access to the ore before anybody else does, you know. Uh, so you can like just steal a little bit of boxes here and there if you need to, or steal equipment. Because I think I think the reality is, is places like mining facilities, stealing equipment that's used to load and offload ships may be more valuable than the the ore that's being taken out of it. Because you can yeah. sell that equipment on the on the market as well. If if CIG goes the route of um, what is it, Elder Scrolls, where you can sell everything, <laughs> then yeah, people you will know, strip I, ideally. The bolts. Ideally, every station and every fleet that's out there should have a logistics train tied to it mm -hmm. that you you can exploit. And that's what you should be hacking places to learn about, mm -hmm. to not necessarily overtly tip your hand to change a value on production or to shut down a system, but to know what do they need most and where to find it. And that's going to be that's going to be your food coming into stations, mm -hmm. your salvaging equipment or your materials you need to refine stuff fuel for the navy those mm -hmm. are the things you need to pick that makes a lot, a lot of sense as well because cig already is going to track that information with quantum yeah to have the mm -hmm. ability for players to track it would tell you a lot because if you know that this station has a large amount of food coming into it if you're a pirate or maybe an organization that wants to try to exploit a station you could attack food convoys to cause the food prices to spike so that you can then come in and sell food at a higher cost and then leave. Um, but you need to know what station needs what and how, how much it needs and what's coming in and what's going and what are the patterns because you don't want to attack a station's food convoys if the Navy's hanging around. So, you know, having access to the information somehow would be good and it probably wouldn't make sense for them to just publicly tell you how much food they need. Oh, absolutely <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think, uh, Minion? Do you think we should they should be able to change production rates for mining facilities and such? Um. Yeah. Well, I have to agree with CC and like because like you can't change the nature of the ground that's underneath the mine, right? So if it's mm. titanium, it's titanium, and it's byproducts. That that's what you're gonna get. But knowing the buyers, uh, knowing when they tend to buy things like that, um, knowing maybe if you know if they're all of a sudden they're going to get a surge in production they hit a really good vein let's say in quantum they factor that in and all of a sudden no oh, there's 10 times more titanium you know that's going to come out over the next 24 hours and you can take advantage of that i think that those types of ideas with that word adds depth of gameplay i think that that's wonderful if that is possible in the game all right and and piracy as Final note is piracy is all about hitting the softest targets with the biggest payday. Mm -hmm. Going after a station is going to be extremely difficult. It's going to be asset heavy and you're probably going to lose. Yeah. But yeah. supply chains, they're very squishy. They're very ambushable. And you can do it repeatedly for lots of money. That's that's what you need to aim for. As long as you're not too loud, because if you're too loud, then you get a lot of security. So if you kill people, for instance, that's exactly more change more. up who you're hitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, there's, there's one more question. But before I ask that question, I'm going to ask that the Bush Uki asked uh, Cece, what are your thoughts on origin ships? My Eclipse has a torpedo for every single one of them. <laughs> you're, in, you're, you're origin bad kind of guy. Oh yes, <laughs> you 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 and execute would get along very well. Uh, <laughs> um, gosh, all right, um, all right. This is the last question for for the for the show uh, from Steve B. Dancer, who asks, "What are each of your favorite ships and one ship you're looking forward to?" Let's start with you, CC. 
Uh, I think Aegis has the lineup of ships that I like the most, from capabilities to aesthetic. Um, Is if any... I one ship that I'm looking forward for hasn't been announced, but we need it, a hammerhead-sized interdiction ship that can pull people hundreds of kilometers away, and it can stop people from quantuming hundreds of kilometers away. A big, expensive ship but it's also something you have to fight where you can just outrun mantises. Okay. Um, is, was there any one age of ship you prefer over others? Uh, it's a tie between the hammerhead and the eclipse. Those are the two I pilot the most. Okay. Minion favorite ships and one ship you're looking forward to. Oh God. Favorite ships. The I, I own all my favorites. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Caterpillar, Reclaimer. Um, I love the Drake Cutlass. Not so much these days, but you know, I still, th I still think it's the best starter ship you can put your hands on. Um, the Herald. I have a soft spot in my heart for my Herald. I've had that thing since the 2014 sale, when it was asymmetrical, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love that ship, and I'd love to see gameplay for it. The ship that I'm looking forward to, obvious Corsair. I mean, let, let's let's get it in there. I can't wait. Uh, I always say this, but my favorite ship is a torn. Like my favorite ship series is the Freelancer. I always have a, a soft spot for the Freelancer because it is such a versatile ship. Uh, yeah, I can see it. It's the the base is good for pretty much everything you want to do. It's you can turn it into a combat ship. It's not great for combat, but it it can work. The Dur has insane amount of legs for its size it can just basically go across the entire system you can slap the fastest size two quantum on that thing and jump across the systems and still have fuel to, to go mm -hmm. and do it in seconds and so that means that like long range long term really efficient quantum drives that thing can run forever it, it'll rival like the carex in terms of its its length its its range um the only thing that stops it is you know its own resources it's like the food for the pilot <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, the Max is obviously one of the best, in my opinion, uh, uh, commerce and trade ships. Because it's not just a trucker ship. It's a ship that can also be used for personal transport as well as mm -hmm. carrying ships, like carrying vehicles and stuff like that. Um, and the Miss, who doesn't like missile spam? Like, it's it's an up-armored version of the, of the Freelancer. So... Uh, it's it's like the whole range is great, uh, but I have to say if I had to choose one ship that I like the most, it would probably be the Cutlass Black because it's just, it sucks in the best kinds of ways. <laughs> it's true. It's so bad at what it does, but nothing like it exists. There's nothing that can do it, what it the way it can do it. Um, it's a good pirate ship. It's a good smuggling ship. It's a good combat ship. It's a good trade ship. It's a good uh, like drop ship. Yeah. It it can do anything and everything you want it to do. Uh, short of, um, yeah, it can do anything and everything. Killing an interest. <laughs> yeah, because uh, like if you want to mine with it, you can slap a rock inside of it, and it's perfect to, perfect size to carry around a rock. Yeah. Um, if you want to do uh, transport for vehicles, it actually can transport like a. a uh, uh, what is it? A space uh, bike. cyclone and space bikes. So uh, the it can even do rescue operations because all you need to be able to do is open up the side doors and throw people in to, to the to the cargo bay. And yeah. as long as you keep someone alive with them. So. So, yeah, the black, I think, is is my favorite ship. And the one I'm looking forward to other than the merchantman is going to be the Corsair, just because I have a Corsair and it's cool and it. I like Drake. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of thing. So, all right, y'all. Uh, I think that's it. That's the last question for today. Thank you all for joining us here. Thank you to these wonderful content creators. Make sure you're following Minion on YouTube and CC10104, which is Apex Crime Stat, right? Yes. A Apex Crime Stat. Twitch.tv slash Apex Crime Stat and YouTube.com slash Minion Soldier to check out their content. And, and as always, if you want to watch this live and ask your own questions for chats uh, from chat for the casts, whatever that is that week, uh, join us live at uh, twitch.tv slash theastropub, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 
11 p.m. UTC. Uh, and if I ask your own questions in chat on YouTube, uh, you know, in, in the comments section, your own questions, your own thoughts on what we talked about. Like, subscribe if you like this content. We do this. I do this almost every week. Um, and yeah, like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black. There you go.